Okay, guys, we'll uh, get started. And uh, at the end of yesterday, I introduced a bunch of different types of errors that you might come across. And uh, just to start today, what we'll do is figure out what we can do with those errors and the fact that you don't just have to uh, have an error throw a bunch of Python information on the screen. You can actually do something interesting with it. So we've seen a few of the types of errors. And uh, let's figure out what type of error we might come across when we run this code. So I, I've written some code with the idea of getting an error so that I can find out what type of error it has and then um, learn to handle that type of error. So this is some super basic code that has a while true. And we know that a while loop will keep going while the condition remains true. So this code is going to go on forever. And then what it does is it asks the user to enter a number, it uses raw input to get their answer, and then we convert it to an integer, which is a whole number. After that's successfully happened, we have a break statement, which will take us out of the while loop and finish that code. So it's very basic, um, it uses a few of the things we came across previously. But the main point is that if we type something else that isn't a number, we get an error, because we're trying to convert it to an integer, and Python doesn't know what to do. So if I run this code, and when it asks me to enter a number, I type a letter, what I see back is uh, some of this error messaging that we introduced yesterday. It tells us that there is a value error because the literal int cannot be converted to a number with base 10. Basically means that it doesn't know how to turn an A into an integer, which makes sense. So we've seen here that we have this value error, and this is the key thing I want to look at. When we uh, saw the other errors yesterday, we saw perhaps there was type error here, IO error here. So when you come across an error, have a look at that part of the screen where it tells you what type the error is. And then you'll learn uh, which error types you need to handle in your code. So this doesn't have to be the end. We, we, we found out that there's an error and that our code has the potential of throwing a value error. So what we can do is we can handle that value error. Now, there are, uh, what we will do is we will wrap our code in a try statement. So what a try statement means is that the code will try and execute, and if it comes across an error, it will handle that error and do something with it. Sometimes this in coding is called trying and catching, because you throw an error and then you catch it and deal with it. Um, in Python, the keyword is accept, so it's going to try and do some code, if that code fails, it'll go to the accept block and handle the error there. So let's have a look at what that means. So the code's still the same. We still have our wild true. The difference is now we've put the main body of the code, this casting to an integer and this break statement, within a try. You can tell it's in the try statement because it's indented again underneath. Remember when we had a for loop, all the code that was in the for loop was indented underneath it. When you had a while loop, it was the same. With the try statement, it's the same. All the code that's indented under the try statement is part of that try statement. So if an error occurs anywhere in that try statement, what Python will try to do is go to the accept keyword that's in line with the try. So it'll go down here, it'll see the word accept and it will try and match the error that's been thrown by your code with the error that you've written here. So here we've written value error because we know that there's the potential for our code to throw a value error. So what Python will do if we type a letter is it will be in the try statement, it'll ask you to enter a number, you'll type a letter, an error will be thrown, but rather than showing the error code on the screen, what Python will do is go to the accept thing try and match the error that's thrown with one of the errors here, and here we are handling a value error, so it will match the value error with the value error here, and it will run whatever's indented underneath the value error. And in this case, I want to print not a valid number, try again. And because we're in a while true loop, what that's going to do is it's just going to keep asking you again and again until you enter something that Python can work with. So if we try an A, the value error will be thrown, It'll go to the accept that has a value error handling. It'll print that it's not a valid number. It'll go back to the top of the while loop, and it'll try again. If we enter a B, it's going to do the same again. Once we enter a 1, or a valid number, it will successfully convert it to an integer. It will hit the break statement, and the code will finish. 
So it's going to keep asking again and again while a value error is thrown. Does that make sense? Okay, awesome. Uh, so yeah, when you see a try statement, there is going to be an accept statement in line with it, and the error that it's handling will be written after the word accept. I'll skip over some of this. So that was just one error type, right? We saw that there was a value error, and uh, there are many different error types. We saw a bunch of them yesterday. And you can handle multiple different error types. So perhaps there's the potential for our code to throw value errors, type errors, keyboard interrupt errors, which are the ones you get when you press Control and C. And perhaps we want to deal with all of these things, and some of them in the same way, some of them in different ways. So here I have a try statement. I have the same code. But now I have type errors and value errors handled a certain way. I have keyboard interrupt errors handled another way. And then I have this final else statement. Now, we've seen if and else. We've seen while and else. We can also have try and else. And this final else statement in, a tr in, a, in line with the try will be run if the code that's indented under try completes successfully without an error. So it's going to try and run the code uh, where it asks the user for an input. If any of the errors are thrown, it's going to match them. And if we have the final else where the uh, code was successfully run, it's going to print that that was a good job and then run the break statement. So the try statement code will be attempted. If any error is thrown that matches one of the exceptions, it will, uh, it will run the code indented underneath the appropriate exception. But if the code completes successfully, it'll run the code indented under the else statement. So the way this code works is it'll ask you to enter something. It'll handle some of the errors if you do the wrong thing and make you try again. And if you do it right, it'll tell you you've done a good job and hit the break statement. So the, um, here we can see multiple error types on a single line in brackets and separated by a comma so that we are handling type errors and value errors in the same way. We are handling keyboard interrupt errors in a slightly different way. But you can imagine building up a bunch of these to handle different errors in different ways. This might look intimidating. It's a lot of code just for error handling on a very simple piece of code. And you won't need to do this much error handling um, for most tasks that you, uh, that you program. Uh, but it's good to know how to do the error handling. And it's good not to just, uh, if, if an error is a likely or an error occurs a lot when you're running your code, it's good to think about how you're going to handle it, especially if you're packaging up the code and sending it off to someone else, or you've got other people running your code um, in your lab or further afield. Uh, seeing the Python error messages printed to the screen can put people off, but if you give them a helpful error message about what went wrong, uh, they're more likely to persevere. Uh, so you, the, the code to error handling ratio here is a bit off, but it's an example of how you might uh, deal with different error types. So the good news is, this, this looks like a nightmare, right? We have, we're handling type errors, value errors, keyboard. You could imagine having to deal with all the different error types could lead to a lot of code. But the good news is that the errors are in a hierarchy such that you, you, if you want to handle a bunch of different errors the same way, you can actually just handle the super error, which uh, all the other errors lie underneath. So rather than writing error handling code for floating point errors and overflow errors and zero division errors, we can just handle arithmetic errors, and it will deal with all those things. And then you might give an error message that says something went wrong with the maths, try a different number. Um, so because of this hierarchy, and I won't go into detail, but you can look it up online, you can handle uh, the errors that are super errors to a bunch of sub errors and deal with everything the same way. Um, I encourage you not to do something like accept exception, which will do the same thing for every error type, just because it's very difficult to provide a useful output for every error type. You know, if, you're, um, if you have an accept exception and then you print something generic like an error happened, the user's no wiser than if you just let the Python error throw out. So rather than doing accept exception, you're better not to do any error handling at all. And then just uh, deal with the specific errors you come across when you run your code um, and errors that the user is likely to encounter. So as you're running it, you'll see errors. And if you keep seeing the same type of error, think about doing some error handling. Uh, okay, any questions about exceptions before I move on?
Awesome. Okay, so that's the end of that stuff. We're going to go over here.